Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the website service that's built into OS X Server. Now one of the advantages of hosting your own server is the ability to host your own website, uh, which could save you hosting fees and all of that kind of stuff. And so uh, it really is a nice service uh, to be able to have in your server. Now uh, there's a couple things that I do want to cover on that though just to see whether it's something you would want to do or not. Uh, because for some of you uh, making your own website might not be needed. If you're a home user uh, you may be fine with the built-in website that comes with OS X Server. And so I just want to show you that first uh, just to let you know that there is a server that's built into uh, the actual server service. Now what I've done is I've turned on the service just so that I can show you what that looks like. I turned it on ahead of time. Usually I do all the configurations first and then turn the service on, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like. Uh, so you'll notice down here I've got this uh, view server website and that's based on this uh, website that is already set up here. You notice I've got a server website on port 80 and I've got one on port 443. Uh, that just means this website is a secure website, SSL. Uh, or when you when you log into a website, it'd be HTTPS, uh, which lets you know that it is secure. And so those are the two websites that are sitting on there right now. Now, if I just click on this little link down here and just uh, click on that, you'll notice it brings up my website. And this is the default server website that comes up. Just by typing in my server name there into a web browser, uh, I'll get this information when the server site is up. And so you'll see here it's got basic access to things like Profile Manager or Xcode if you're using that, or your settings where you can kind of customize your password and other settings on your account. And it's also got this wiki uh, server here. And I'm going to cover the wiki service uh, in the next screencast, um, but that might be enough for you if you're a home user. You may not need to do all these other things to set up your own website. And as I'll show you in a minute, uh, this might be even the safer route to go if you're just kind of looking for a home uh, website and one that really, you know, isn't, uh, you're not too concerned about uh, the public engaging it or you're not doing any commerce over it or anything like that. So let me just uh, put this down here. So let me just kind of walk you through this, but before I do that, let me just give you a few cautions if you are going to host your own website, because there's a few things that you do need to consider. Uh, the first thing you need to consider is downtime, and that's a really important thing. If you are hosting a website uh, on your own home server, and your website goes down, and your server goes down for some reason, maybe you have a power outage, or uh, you forget and you turn your computer off when you go out of town, well, that means your website goes down as well. And so that can cause you problems because if you're relying on that website, people won't be able to access it. So you need to consider downtime. The other thing is if you're hosting a home server, you want to ask uh, your ISP, does your ISP block ports 80 and 443? Uh, in some cases, ISPs do not want you to host your own website, so they will go and block those ports. And if they do that, then you will have no access uh, to be able to host your server because no one will be able to get to your server from the outside and nobody therefore will be able to get to your website. And so that's going to cause you some problems if those two ports are blocked. Again, port 80 is for a regular website and port 443 is for a secure website. And so if those things are blocked, you need to find that out or your website won't function. Uh, and then finally is, uh, you know, do you, have, um, do you have a static IP or not? Uh, if you've got a dynamic IP, that means your IP address will change from time to time, and that means in the time that your uh, IP changes before that and you catch up on your domain provider to get that fixed, your website may not show up anymore. Well, actually, it won't show up anymore until you make that change. And so having a static IP is something that you really should consider if you're going to host your own website. Uh, so that those are some things that you want to think about and consider if you're going to host your own website. Otherwise, if you're a home user and you really rely on your website, you may want to have that hosted with an outside provider. Or you could have your, um, you know, your Mac Mini or something hosted at a place like Mac Stadium or one of those places that hosts those for you where the service is always on and they take care of all those details for you. Then it would really make sense to run your own website there instead of paying hosting fees. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, just some things to consider when you're looking at hosting websites. Now, if we come back here to the website service, you notice I've got this access area. Now, one of the things I, I've noticed, you see how this says access the network at, um, on my server 2.local. Uh, one of the things I found is that uh, Apple's reachability service isn't always reliable. Uh, sometimes it takes a while for it to update. And so if you're getting that, uh, don't worry about it. Test it on the outside, and if it works, you're probably fine. Again, we can set permissions on who has access to it, and I'm just going to leave it at all networks.
And then you notice we've got two settings here. You can enable PHP web applications or Python web applications. And that's if you have a dynamic website where you have a lot of things happening uh, on your website where you're using PHP or Python, you need to enable these services so that it sets up Apache accordingly so that those service are, services are activated and can use that part of your website. Uh, so you want to check those if you've got that going on. Again, down here is your default websites, and this is where we actually add websites. And so before we add our own, what, let's just take a look at what these websites look like here. So I'm just going to double click on this, and this gives us the window that kind of shows us the different settings we have for the website itself. Uh, you'll notice that uh, we're, we're storing our website in the default area, and you can see it's in library, server, web, data, sites, default. Uh, I can actually change the location if I want to on where I want to store the website. But it's really important that you leave the server website that's built in alone, that you don't change that or delete any of these things, or you could cause some problems with the stability of your server. Uh, but if you want to see where that's located, if I just click on this little arrow here, it's going to bring up a finder window for me and show me all of the files that are included in this default website. And so this is where it's located, and these are all of the different files that make that default website that I showed you work. All right, that's how you get there quickly. Uh, you have a who can access area, which again, you can say anyone or limit it to a specific group, or you can limit access by folder if you wanted to. If you only had specific folders you wanted accessed, you could limit the access to specific folders, and that would help you shape that as well. So you can go, you can actually set up some security on the website if you wanted to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, you can set up additional domains if you want to do that. And so these would be alternative domain names for this website. Uh, for instance, if it's server.toddoltoff.com, I might want to put uh, home.toddoltoff.com. So if people put that in, they'll still get access to the site as well. So I can add those domains in there. I'm just going to say cancel. Uh, I can set up some redirects as well. And so the source is this website, HTTPS with the server name. And uh, that this is already set up to be a redirect to the website. Uh, on there as well. I can set up other redirects as well uh, that can forward to URLs uh, from other websites and things like that. Let's cancel that. Uh, aliases, I can set up aliases and uh, they make folders on the server publicly accessible via URLs on, on, their, on this website and so I can set those aliases up that will take me to different locations. Again, just to do that I just click the plus, put the path in in the folder and that alias will be established. And then here's the index files that I've got. And these are all of the different files um, that are available in my website folder for this particular website. And I can drag them in the order they should be uh, used. I can delete them. I can add other fi uh, index files. I can do what I want with that. So let's go ahead and cancel. And then I've got advanced settings where I can enable server-side includes. I can allow overrides for HT access files. And that's if I've got certain aspects of my website that are secure that I'm using security on, I would allow that so that that security could work on the website when it executes. And again, allow folder listing, a few other things there that are uh, some more advanced settings. Uh, you probably won't need to use most of those. So let's go ahead and cancel. So that gives you an idea of the basic settings of the website. I'm just going to cancel this to get back here. And so I can get into either of these if I want to just by clicking on these and changing the information. Now let's say for a minute I want to host my own website. I want to do something different besides the default website here, and I want to make that work. Well, in order to do that, before I actually add any websites over here, I need to set up my DNS so that it's ready to go correctly for the website that I want to set up. So let's go over to DNS for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, add in my, uh, you know, my primary zone for a website that I want to have. Let's say it says cloud.toddoltoff.com. So I'm going to click the plus here, and I'm going to add, uh, you can see all the different things that I can add here. I'm going to add a new primary zone. And I'm going to call this primary zone uh, cloud.toddoltoff.com. Okay, I'm going to add that in there, and I'm going to leave everything else here on the default. Okay, so let's say create. And it's going to add that primary zone for me. And you can see there's my primary zone right there. Everything's ready to go. Now what I want to do is add a machine record. And so in this machine record, uh, I can put whatever I want on there. I can put a host name or whatever. And so in this case, I'm just going to put www, okay, because it's going to be a website. And for the IP address, I just add my local IP. So 10.0.1.3, because that's going to point to my server. And I'm going to say create. 
And so it's going to create that for me. And you see now I've got a now I've got a machine and a name server all set up and ready for me for my web address there for my www.cloud.toddletoff.com. Now I could also just if I wanted it to be uh, you know www.server.toddletoff.com, I could have added that in there as well and uh, made that DNS happen. But this is what I've got and this is ready to go and that looks good. So now my DNS is all set and ready to go to make this work. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the website service and we're going to set up a new website. So if I just click the plus here, it's going to allow me to set up a new domain name. So I'm going to type in my domain name and you notice the red dot over there until I start typing in the rest of my domain name and it says yep I know that you've got that set up in DNS. So you want to see the green dot because that means that everything's ready to go for your website and that the DNS is set up properly. Now if I want I can add an IP address. I can put my local one or any. I'm going to leave it at any. Uh, if I wanted to make this a secure site all I would need to do is add my SSL certificate and it would make it an HTTPS or a secure website. I'm going to leave it alone because I don't care in this case. Now, where do I want to store the files? Well, I can have it automatically create a new folder for me, or I can say other, and I can point it to whatever file I want. So if I want to store it in a particular location, I can do that. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to let it go and create its own folder, and you'll see it's going to create one with that um, basic name on it, but I'm going to leave it alone. And then everything else, I don't want any redirects or anything like that, so uh, I'm good there, and so I'm going to set up the... Uh, uh, the information okay we're ready to go so I'm just gonna say create and so now what it's gonna do is actually create the folder and everything that I need for my website And you can see here it is right here all IP addresses and port 80 now one thing I want to do is I want to go back in here and edit And you see now that I edit I can actually you know do I can actually do um, you know limit the access to the website if I want to do that you know to a specific group uh, I'm not gonna do it though I'm gonna leave that alone but I want to go into where my files are located there's the folder it created, right? There's the default website. There's the folder. And you notice it added all these index files in here that it does for the default website. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these and just delete them. And it's going to ask me to authenticate. And I'm going to say OK. And now that's all deleted, OK? Because I, I want to put my own website in here. And this is where you would publish your files, depending on what you're using. If you're using RapidWeaver or some website creation tool, you would put your files in there. What I did is I just created a simple HTML document here for my website. I'm going to drop it in there. It's going to ask me to authenticate again. OK, once I have that in there, I just say OK. And so now there my website file is in there, right? So I've got that all set and ready to go. OK, one thing that's important to point out that I didn't point out earlier needed to make that change is that you want to change that HTML file. You want to make sure you have an index.html file in there, or otherwise Apache won't be able to find it and the server won't uh, pull it up. So a real important point there that you need your index file in there because that's what it's going to be looking for. Uh, so let's close this down. Yeah, we're just going to say OK and leave that alone. And let's go ahead and test our website now. So I'm just going to bring up our web page here that we had from before. And let me just type in our new web address, uh, cloud.toddletoff.com. There we go. And as you can see, there we go. That's my HTML file. Testing out my website. Can you see it OK? And so as you can see now, the website's up and running. And everything is fine and ready to go. So that gives you an idea of how to set that up. Now, obviously, your website will be a little more complex than this, and you might use your preferred uh, program to set it up. But as long as you drag those files in there and have it set the way that you want it, uh, you'll be able to get access to your uh, website that you set up. So that gives you an idea of how the um, website service works in OS X Server. You can add, again, like I said, various websites if you want. You can do a bunch of virtual websites and, uh, and set that up on the server, and it works really well in order to host your websites as long as you've got everything in place that you need. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.